Hello there folks, DJ Berg Star here back with another tip of the day. So today I want to talk about your low end of your track, your sub frequencies, your bass line, your kick drum, and how all that sort of needs to be in mono. Um, I'm not saying put all of those in mono or anything. I'm saying just the low frequencies need to be in mono because if you have your sub and your bass and your kick drum and you've widened them in some way and it's got a nice stereo field, um, what's going to happen is, is if it's wide like that, some of those frequencies are going to cancel out and you might lose a lot of the energy of your subwoofer and your bass line and that kick drum um, when it's all playing together. And you sort of want to keep the low end of your entire project in mono. Um, and that helps too when you're playing in larger systems like clubs and things. Um, so let's talk about this. Um, let's listen to a piece of my track first. Okay, so on this bass line that I have here, let's solo this. I've intentionally made this maybe wider than I normally would for a bass line for this tutorial so you can see what's happening here. So let's solo this. And you'll notice, especially if you're listening, you know, in stereo on a good system, um, that this is really wide bass line. And it sounds beautiful. Let's listen to it. You see all these frequencies up here. We want that, even though it's a bass line. Uh, this is where that stereo width is coming from. Um, down here, we don't really need that to be in stereo, and I'll show you that you probably can't even hear it. So, let's go to my master and show you what I'm doing here. So, on the master track, you'll see that I put on this utility that you can find in the utilities folder in Ableton. And in here, you can put the whole track in mono. Um, which is a good idea to refer to your track as you're mixing and mastering how it sounds in mono because if it sounds good in mono it's going to sound great in stereo <laughs> as a general rule but there's this button below that has bass mono and what that does is no matter what's playing on any of these tracks as soon as it crosses over this I've set it to 200 hertz Anything that's under 200 hertz will automatically switch to mono. And let's play what that sounds like, and I'll bet you won't even notice the difference. So what we can do is, is we'll play this, and I'll turn this on and off, and see if you can hear the difference. We'll solo that track for now. Right, that's normal it's got all of your really wide frequencies but if I want this whole low end to be in mono look at that it's on I can't hear the difference but I know that's gonna help the overall mix later and keep the energy of this track and the whole project because this is on my main master output so everything on this project is going to be in mono below 200 hertz. So the same thing applies. Here is my bass line, I mean my sub bass. And so in the sub, it's really low. Let's listen to this one. Now here's your 200 marker. And most of your sub here then is going to go ahead and be in mono because you really kind of don't want the sub being in stereo anyway. Um, but a little of it's okay um, if it bleeds over a bit, um, as long as it's in the upper range. Um, let's look at the master again here. 
If I turn this on and off, you probably won't hear any difference. Okay. Now, here's my drum line as well. My uh, drums are all just in one sample here. But anything that's crossing over this 200 will also be in mono if I have this set to bass mono. Let's see if we can hear a difference there. Not really. Let's go back to the normal bass line that's really wide. We'll go back here. Now what you can do is you can listen to just that frequency that it's referring to. So that's what's in mono. This is the whole thing. This is the mono part. So you can kind of refer to that or reference it if you want, if you're mixing and mastering to make sure you get it just right. But I sort of normally put this at around 200 hertz and that seems to be safe. And so I'm going to keep the energy of my song that way in my sub line and my bass and my kick drum are still going to have that energy and the frequencies on the edges as it gets in more stereo aren't going to cancel themselves out and be messing with my low end. If you put the whole project in mono, you can definitely hear the difference there because it's removing all the high frequencies as well into mono. And so that's a jar, uh, you know, sort of a drastic change. But we don't want a drastic change. We just want to keep the very lows in mono. And that way your mix will sound a little bit more pro and the frequencies won't be canceling themselves out. And basically you'll have a cleaner mix when you're done. So using this utility on your master track is great. Now, you can also not mess with your master if you don't want to and just put this utility on your sub bass and on your bass line so you're not crossing over into other instruments that maybe have a little low end you kind of want to keep in stereo. So you can get more specific with this but as a general rule I can kind of just throw this on my entire mix on the master and it doesn't really affect the way it sounds, but it helps the mix. Um, when I say it doesn't affect the way it sounds, I mean it's not making it worse or it's not that all of a sudden you can't hear the nice, you know, stereo widening you wanted on things as long as it's above 200 hertz. You'll hear all that nice stuff you wanted. But below, you don't need it because you can't hear the difference anyway. And it will sound better on systems and your whole mix will sound cleaner. So basically, that's my tip of the day is to start using this utility for your bass mono. And set it to a frequency you want. You might need to play around with this, but I like 200 hertz. Okay, so that's my tip of the day. Thanks for watching again, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. DJ Bergstar out.